At She Can, we tell women's stories. We show how women got to where they are today. And I'm very excited to talk to Hilary Hartling today. Hilary, welcome to She Can. You are a brand and messaging expert and strategist for modern entrepreneurs. And you'll tell us more about this in a second. You really help entrepreneurs create captivating brands with messaging that resonates. You had a long career um, doing marketing and projects for Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and so really powerhouse brands in movie and entertainment. And then you pivoted and you established your own brand consultancy and online education platform to support entrepreneurs um, further develop their brand strategies and their messaging. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, thank you for the great intro. Yes to all of that. And I always say, uh, first now I have to lead with, I'm a mom to my beautiful daughter, Ruby, who will be turning three soon. And she's honestly one of the miracles I've manifested in my life. I've done it in my career, but she is like one of the most beautiful things. I'm a single mom and I adopted her at birth. And so along with being a single mom, I'm also a solopreneur. So talk about personal growth. They say, if you want personal growth, either start a business or have a baby. So I've sort of decided to do it in spades, but I'm not alone. There's so many women out there who are doing this yeah. and I'm, I'm proud to be one of them, but uh, yes, you're right. I'm, I'm a brand and messaging strategist now, and I've had a full career behind me, both on the corporate side and entertainment world and really film marketing. Um, so I've done that for a number of years and that's really shaped how I approach doing my business and positioning other people's businesses and helping them clarify their message and really feel confident in how they talk about what they do. And it's so hard sometimes when it's your own brand. So I help a lot of people where even if they have a business brand, their personal brand is tied up in it somehow and they have to be visible now as their own brand. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times it's so hard for them to see and be very clear about who they are and how they talk about themselves without feeling like you're being braggy, without feeling like you're, you know, it, it's hard for women to do this. And so I think part of my job is to really boost confidence. And every time someone walks away uh, from working with me on developing their brand strategy and messaging, they're excited and rejuvenated about their business and they have a roadmap to follow. So that's what I'm up to. Hillary, I signed up to all of everything that I could sign up to because I want some of that Hillary magic fairy dust because you have this down so well. So tell us a little bit more about your journey. You, you've been working for these powerhouse brands. You obviously did really well. You decided to become a mom. You adopted a, a little girl. Um, when did you decide to bring this in house, do your own thing, set up your own thing? What are the pitfalls? What are your successes? Yeah, you know, it's funny. If uh, while I was at Disney, you know, they make things very comfortable on the corporate side, right? So it's hard to kind of get up and leave that. But, and it wasn't all together my choice. I will say that there were a bunch of, you know, stars that had to align. And the last couple of years I was, you know, marketing movies at Disney, I sort of started to feel like, okay, I've done this. I've done this. What's new? What's different? What, how can I challenge myself? And, and like most people, I think, and I think a lot of women will see themselves in this is like, when you start to think, okay, what's the next dream or how can I develop further? You're thinking within your current circumstances, instead of breaking outside that box to see like, well, hold on, the whole world is my oyster. I can do anything. What is the thing I would really want to do next? And I had sort of spent so much time creating and growing into my dream job at Disney that I forgot to dream about the next dream, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And here's the thing is you can have as many dreams come true as you choose. You just have to have the clarity around your direction and what's next for you. Get a little more inkling on maybe your bigger purpose so that you know what to go after and then have the courage to jump and do it. So I would say, I was sort of feeling when you feel like you're not growing, you yeah. automatically feel stuck, mm -hmm. right? It's just mm -hmm. this thing where you're like, where, where am I growing? I'm not growing. And then you feel stuck. So I, at one point had decided, well, actually I'll tell you the story. It was January 1st, 2015. 
And I woke up on New Year's Day and I thought, you know what? I don't have a plan for what's next. I don't know what I'm doing next, but I feel like I need to leave. So I want to make a plan. I'm going to leave Disney. I don't know what's going to happen. Let me just Google a couple of things. So I started Googling things like mid-career transitions. And this like questionnaire popped up. And the first question I saw was, what would you do if you were 10 times bolder? Okay. And I instantly knew my answer. And it was, I would leave Disney. I would not have another job to go to. I would take a full year off. I would get re-inspired, follow my purpose, find some more joy, travel, see friends, see family. I'd re-landscape my yard, start writing again, you know, do all those things that just sort of like nourish your spirit. And funny enough, January 15th came along and I was called into a meeting first thing in the morning. And I was let go in a reorganization of the company and they handed me my severance package, which paid me for a year. Wow. <laughs> so I said, okay, thank you universe. I didn't realize once you got clear, it happened that fast, but it really, really can. And so I did exactly what I thought when I answered that question, I took a full year. Um, and it wasn't until after that year that I really started looking about like, what do I want to do next? I did not sit there in my corporate job and say, I really want to start a business. I did not. Had you asked me then, I would have said, that sounds too hard. Who wants to do that? Right. But yeah. I ended up doing it because every time I looked at going to another job, it felt like doing more of the same and feeling stuck again. And I was very spoiled by the IP and the characters and the worlds that were created at Disney and at Pixar and at Marvel and at Lucasfilm and all these amazing storytelling brands there weren't a lot of other companies out there that could rival that. And so I thought, you know what, I got to do something different. And I don't want to even lean on the network in the entertainment industry that I have. I want to go to a whole new, I need to establish a whole new audience. And I, I, I thought female entrepreneurs and other women really going after and pursuing their next big dream is who I wanted to work with. And so that's what I did. And so when, when did your daughter come into the picture and how set up were you and how do you combine the two? Yeah, it's really hard. So I was on an adoption journey for five years. I got her three years ago. She's almost three. And, and I got her at, when she was three days old. Um, and I will say that because it was adoption and you, I didn't know when she would be coming. Um, it's hard to plan for in your business. So my business was five years old at the time. I had a failed adoption um, in 2020, in the year of COVID. I was supposed to adopt this baby boy. It fell through. And then a year later, almost to the day, um, she was a surprise. So with the first one, I, I was matched with a birth mom in her second trimester. And so I was with her for like five months uh, planning for this. And then she sort of ghosted. Um and with Ruby, I, after that, I put my intention very clearly to the universe. And I said, okay, I don't want another match like that. I just want a phone call one day saying, your baby's here, come get her. And that's what happened. I was in the middle of a three hour branding intensive with a new client. We were in person for the first time. I've done it, had done it since COVID. So she was at my house and I get a phone call saying, um, there's a baby girl born yesterday. If you can get to Washington state tomorrow, she's yours. Wow. And I was like, how do I focus on this session and how do I book a plane ticket? Because I forgot how to do that right now. <laughs> how beautiful <laughs> is that? It was beautiful. And, and also I had already planned, this was late July. I had already planned that year. I was like, I'm going to take August off. So I'd already planned in my business to have August off. So it, it got set up beautifully. So I was already prepared in my business, at least for the one month off. But I wasn't prepared necessarily for what it looks like beyond. And I will say my business has definitely changed since um, since I became a mom because I don't have as much endless time to sit there and contemplate and create and, you know, do the things that I would do just as a, a solopreneur and not having any other responsibility other than a dog at the time, right? Like, it's a little different. So I'm still navigating the best ways to work and also be a single mom. And uh, the economy is not in my favor right now. So I'm coming up with new ways to do that. But yeah, it's my business has definitely evolved and changed as I've grown, as my audience has grown. And I'm always up for looking for the best ways for me to serve, but also just like, how do I want to set up my own life first so that it 
raises my vibration, raises my energy, fills me up, right? Yeah. I'm always looking to figure out new ways to do that, that serve me better, but that so I can serve my audience better. That's amazing, Hillary. What a beautiful story is that. So tell us a little bit more about your business. A client comes to you and how does that onboarding process work? Um, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so I have a couple of different ways you can work with me. I, my, my main uh, offering is that I work with some, an entrepreneur one-on-one -on -one, and it's really a done for you brand strategy development service. I used to do it more on a one-on-one -on -one coaching package, but what I quickly realized is that most entrepreneurs, this is such a foundational piece that affects every other part of your business, uh, that they wanted this done quicker. I was like, well, let me just do it. Let me just do it for you. I can just do this. I can see it already as we're talking about it. So I do that in a three hour Zoom session. That's kind of like my deep dive to really pull out of the, the founder or the business owner exactly what their vision is. Tell me all the words. They just like word vomit to me. And what I do is I take all that, piece it together, polish it, make it concise, make it clear towards the audience that they're talking to, because you have to make it very clear to that specific audience, not just to anybody. And I come back a week later with a full brand strategy guidebook that they, it's usually like 20, 25 pages long with everything they need in it from here is your target audience and what you need to know about them, not just demographics, but psychographics, which are very important. It's like the internal motivations of your client, mm -hmm. but also here's your brand purpose. And this is how it's clearly stated. Like I write all of this for my clients. We talk about brand perception. Here's the five key words that really describe your brand and the experience you want to deliver to your clients. So it kind of becomes a filter for them for their brand. Like, oh, I'm creating content. Is it delivering on these things, right? So it's a really useful um, guide for them. And then we get into, here's your mission statement. Here's the vision for the direction you're headed. Here are the core values and how you operate and what you care about and what you stand for. Here's your main brand, brand tagline, but here are other taglines you can use as marketing headlines and hooks. Here is how you would visually package your brand strategy-wise. I don't do design work, but when you have the brand guidebook, that will inform a brand designer in what to do. Yeah. Uh, then we look at your packages. So depending on what kind of business you have, I've done both product-based businesses and service-based businesses. Mm. With service-based businesses, it's usually, you know, what are your coaching packages kind of thing or service packages? What do we call them? How do we position them so people get it really instantly and clearly? And then for products, which is really fun, I actually just branded this um, contact, colored contact lens company in Indonesia, <laughs> of all places. Wow. And what we did is she had this beautiful vision for her, her company and how it means really more than just about the lenses. And we branded, I wrote like stories as her product descriptions and we renamed her colored lenses around these stories and the vision and the purpose she had for the brand. It was really beautiful. So you can do it both ways, product or service. Um, and then we end with brand voice, your tone of voice, the personality of your brand and really building these brand aligned content pillars. So you know what to be talking about all the time in order to clearly articulate what you do, who it's for and the value you deliver and really develop what you want to be known for from your audience specifically. So that's kind of everything that goes in there. I add different things for different brands based on who the brand is. Sometimes I'll write a brand manifesto for somebody and it's just like, it's almost like your core values coming out in a poem for, with me. Um, <laughs> and that's what people get. So yeah, it's really fun and they get it delivered. And then we have a couple weeks on the back end just to go back and forth, make any minor adjustments, tweaks, and they have the full thing and they're ready to go and just implement. Hillary, what an incredible thing to be doing. And it sounds so creative. What are your top qualities? You're obviously someone who can disseminate a lot of information, bring it down to what the essence is, and, 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 and you are incredibly creative. What would you say are your sort of your recipe for success that you have? Yeah, I would say the first thing, and I think a lot of people would probably say this about me too, it's sort of my high vibe, positive energy that really starts to attract uh, not only amazing people with beautiful hearts, but who have inspiring projects. I think I do have a knack for that. I would say I agree with you. It's sort of my creativity mixed with my strategic business and marketing sense that really gives me the ability to bring ideas to life. 
yeah. with people and for people and for myself as well. And then what a lot of clients say is they call it, my, they do, they call it my magic, which is one of my key brand words now, just because I've heard it so much from my clients and it's the words I craft. It's the clarity I deliver. It's how I take uh, what they might call the mess in their head. And I polish it into that clear, concise, really compelling brand to captivate their audience. Hilary, so what are the challenges for you on a day-to-day -day basis as a solopreneur? I would say a lot of the, the have to do's, right? I love to live in the creativity part of it, but really when it's, when you're talking about bookkeeping or backend tech work and figuring out how to connect this with that, um, that can get a little bit mundane <laughs> and it's just things that have to happen but that's just part of owning and running a business and if I decide to grow my business to be an even bigger kind of thing then I would probably hire some people but at this point I enjoy doing it on my own but I would say um on a day-to-day -day, it's really just probably the continuous need to be visible and to to create all of the marketing and really not stop right because yeah. that's how people know about you so you really do need to continue yeah. it but um you know sometimes there's there's times where it just falls to the back burner as you're creating new things and dreaming yeah. some of those bigger dreams that you're doing next yeah i i couldn't resonate more with that mm -hmm. so what are your successes what are you most proud of to date Oh gosh, I think, well, besides adopting my daughter, I would say really I'm most proud of having that dual experience that we talked about earlier of having this dream job at Disney for so long and then being able to successfully transition that and really start creating my own dream brand and helping others to make their businesses come to life as well. So I think that duality in that corporate life and the entrepreneurship life and being able to figure out how to be successful at both. Hilary, so give us some top tips. What are your top tips in terms of bringing your brand and your brand message to the fore? I would say um, my, my top tips would be you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your brand. You have to trust your own intuition and not um, look at other people's brands and worry how maybe they they're doing better than you your brand is supposed to be different that is what brand strategy is you're supposed to differentiate and find your uniqueness and actually stand out and not blend in so when you think about like oh i should try it like this because this person's doing it that's blending in you have to have the courage to stand out and i would say also you're helping no one if you're waiting for everything to be perfect before you start so you should just do it before you feel like you're ready yeah, thank you for saying that. Yeah. So what are your plans and goals for the next couple of years? Um, I do have some things I'm working on behind the scenes with my branding business right now, where I'm going to be rolling out some lower ticket offerings so that there's more some entry level things people can kind of get a taste of and really figure out how to stand out and be clear with their brand. But above and beyond that, I would say the next big project I'm working on and the dream I'm having is I've actually finally started writing the books that I've had up in my head for so long. So I have both a fiction and a nonfiction in the works right now. How exciting is that, Hillary? And thank you so much for inspiring us today to really think about our brand again, to really think about our messaging. I everyone to sign up to your newsletter to the meets you have on LinkedIn all the amazing offerings you have and thank you so much for telling your story today thank you for having me